Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to Sunday Tea Book, episode 49, where we are working our way through Chen Chuan's seminal work, Tea Classification in Theory and Practice. Get your kettle on and let's get rolling. While the tea categories that we all know and love existed before publication in 1979, the criteria for each category were ill-defined. And don't run away, but when the show is over, be sure to check out our latest studios. Have you ever tried pig's feet? I was terrified. 2021 may have been a wash for travel, but you can join Jen Li as she travels across China, visiting farmers and tea producers. And of course, Jen and I are always up to our antics, bringing you great content about Chinese tea and its culture, and hopefully bringing you a couple chuckles along the way. And our sip-along tea for today is the crispy and delicious Tian Hom Yunnan Black Tea. This plummy, raisiny tea that has hints of hay is available in 25, 50, and 100 gram bags. You can get it on our website, put it on your wish list, pop it in your cart, leave us a review, and hopefully sip along with us today. Charen is a free tea magazine that Jen and I produce after each tea trip. We take you behind the curtain of Chinese tea. To get it, just head over to our website, gentea.ca slash charen, pop in your email address, and enjoy in-depth articles. Folks, we'll be with you shortly for Sunday Tea Book. Hello, YouTube. Hello. Welcome back to Sunday Tea Book episode 49. Hi. One, we're, almost 50. we're almost at 50. A week away. A week away. We're a week away. It's a sunny, hot, beautiful day here in Ottawa. We've already been out in the garden. We already have a mini zucchini. <laughs> Super I, little. I didn't it's bring fun. it. I was going to bring it to show you, but I forgot. We didn't eat it yet, but we're going to eat it. Josh, hello there on YouTube. You were super early again today. Ding, ding. And uh, finished wiping up all the groceries, bringing up all the groceries, probably. I don't know, wiping. Doesn't matter. Super tired. Yeah. Needs recommendations. Okay, everybody, help out Josh with recommendations for what to drink. Time signature NMA. Mm. Holy barbershop singer fronting a death metal band. Time for TR. <laughs> Pretty good, right? Good job. <laughs> Simmerjeet, hello. Hello, low, low as well. Hello, 4711, and hello, everybody. Welcome to Sunday Tea Book episode 49. Almost at 50, super excited. So let's dive in here. What the heck, for those of you that are new, and I can see a bunch of faces I recognize on the YouTube side, maybe a few in the weeds who are new, maybe on Instagram there's a few new people. What is Sunday Tea Book? Sunday Tea Book is where Jen and I, mostly Jen, but no, we both, we both, and all of you guys, we take a book, paper or an article that is packed with great information um, but is hard to access in the West. Information about what? Information about Chinese tea and its culture. Those kind of things. Okay, not random. Uh, we take a book, article or paper like that, packed with great information, not accessible in the West, full of great information on Chinese tea and its culture, and we translate it live. We don't just do a translation and uh, publish it and put it on our blog and point you to it. Why don't we do that? Doesn't that make more sense? Because over the last six years, six years working with Jen uh, and going, asking all the questions that come with understanding a document like that has been so uh, enriching for my knowledge. And 
Also, I don't always have the right words. So we thought, let's engage the whole community. We do it together. We all get to share in the knowledge. You get to ask the questions I miss. Sometimes I can't think of the right word or we can't think of the right English word. Mm -hmm. You guys have helped us out so much. So that's what Sunday Tea Book is. That's what we're doing right here, right now for the 49th time in a row. So here we are. Welcome to Sunday Tea Book. Of course, all of you guys on Instagram, all of you guys on Instagram, <laughs> have faith. All of you guys out there in Instagram world, jump over to the YouTube side. We've got tea trivia coming. We're gonna pull the document up on the screen and show our notes and talk about them. And we're not gonna do any of that on Instagram because uh, it's either not possible or I'm not interested or I just don't <laughs> want to. So dive over to YouTube so you can join on and uh, sip along tea with us. Let us know what you guys are brewing. Let's rock and roll. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna say bye to Instagram just yet though because we're gonna tell them what we're drinking and a bit about the book we're doing mm. this week. We're continuing with the T classification in the theory and practice by Professor Chen Chuan. Mm. And uh, in today's uh, video, we're going to talk about uh, oolong tea. I think it will be a really interesting topic for uh, many of you guys. Yes, and, it's going to be excellent. Mm, and today's uh, paper is a little bit, uh, it really <sighs> reflects the time. So uh, there are some interesting things coming up. I really look forward to talk about it. And if you are just here for a quick answer to what are the six tea types and uh, what's the difference mm. between say green tea or uh, <laughs> black tea. So we have uh, some short videos um, giving you quick answers yeah. and explains. Well, in this Links kind of a series, we're more diving into some in-depth knowledge oh, yeah. information about this tea is the box set of 12 inch eps on tea classification this is the whole schmazzle okay but the quick videos on the youtube side are in the links down below another mm -hmm. reason to dive over to youtube no insta hate no insta hate <laughs> and uh yes time signature we're talking about blue long today <gasps> that's right and we will be drinking some black tea mm -hmm. while we talk about oolong tea so uh dian hong today i should get on yeah, let's get brewing some Dian Hong. Maybe I'll show them the leaf. You always show them the leaf. I'm going to show them the leaf. So on the YouTube side, they're getting a lovely close-up of the leaf. That is the Yunnan black tea we're going to be drinking today. Full of datey, pruney goodness. Uh, it's a nice, crispy black tea. I'm really looking forward to diving into it. So let us know what you're brewing. Instagram people, jump over to YouTube and let us know what you're brewing when you get there. And uh, YouTube people, let us know what you're brewing. Let us know where you're calling in from or where you're watching from. It's super interesting to be part of a such a global community. It's been really exciting for us as we've been doing Sunday Tea Book over this last almost year, right? Episode almost a year. 49. I think it was it July or August or something? I don't know, but we're getting really close to 52. And um, mm. it's been so exciting to see what a first... 52 what a, is the end of this month, is it? Yeah, I believe so. We must have started around the beginning of July, you're right. Oh, wow, whoa. Good oh. enough. Pick us. Question. Is there 52 weeks in a year? Yeah. How many weeks? I think yeah, you know that. There's exactly 52. 52, right? Yeah, that's right. Ooh. Yeah, so it's been almost a year. Um, we're drinking um, Dian Hom, as we said. I'm really excited about this black tea. It's been interesting. This round, we have made not on purpose made sure that none of the teas match up with the tea well, we're talking about. Obviously, I didn't do a good job of matching No, I think that. it's I fun. Know. It's fun to mix it up, though. Mm. We don't have to drink the tea we talk about, but it is interesting to do it sometimes, too. So if you, have, if you uh, didn't check out the China Tea um, um, Sunday Tea Books, those are all up on our channel, and we covered the teas in, uh, also in depth from a different perspective. Check that out. That's a great series, uh, especially if you're just getting into... Uh, Chinese tea. It's sort of like a tea course. Uh, if you just watch that whole series, it's fantastic. Absolutely. So, um, yeah. So cannot so, wait to get the, uh, the tea going and have a sip. But in the meantime, if you want to hit it now, if you think you've already got value out of this video, please on YouTube side, feel free to smash the thumbs up button. That's really helpful for the channel. 
If you're a little bit tentative and you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to hit the thumbs up, these guys look like they may not know what they're talking about, <laughs> wait a little while. You'll see that we know what we're talking about. And when you get some value out of this video, if you're like, holy cow, I was wrong. These guys are awesome. Smash that thumbs up button. Smash and, it. Yeah, or just press it or click it, whatever. I guess I don't need to say smash it. I feel like Corey's on Corey, Corey on Corey's world from, uh, was it Family Guy? Anyway, Family Guy. whatever. Just hit that thumbs up. It really helps us out. If there's something you don't like about the video and you and you want to hit that thumbs down, leave a comment too, at least, please. If you're going to hit the thumbs down, let us know. Hey, you did X, Y, Z. That was super annoying. I remember somebody did that once. They didn't like mm. the, something I said at the beginning of the video. I said, uh, we laugh, we laugh. So see, I might get a thumbs down just for that. <laughs> But they left me a comment and let me know, hey, I didn't like that. But then they deleted it. I don't know, I guess they were shy. I thought it was very nice of them to hit the thumbs down and leave a comment. So if you're gonna hit the thumbs down, leave a comment. But I should say thumbs up more than I say thumbs down. It's probably very bad practice on YouTube. It's very complicated after all that. Yeah. Is it? I don't know. I, I you know what? have a- look, What's easier? I have leave a thumbs up. I the garden this morning and I feel like after that, I have that empty brain. Mmm, time signature has some gyokuru, gyokuro, mm. green tea. I, have, I struggle with those names. It's just like with everybody probably struggles with the pinyin names. I'm a little better with them. I've been practicing for a few years. But uh, gyokuro, green tea, nice. That sounds delicious. Lolo has, uh, is having fo show. Maybe gonna make a, make a home oolong, a dark mm. oolong. Oh. It's got a nice fruity uh, aroma, a gentle, what? gentle though. It's not booming out. Um, really like that. Mm, haven't had this tea in a while. Looking forward to having it again. Uh, Mac McMillan, ni hao. Let us know what's in your cup. Let us know where you're, uh, where you're watching from. Um, anybody else? Time signature is a bit late. He doesn't usually have tea right. during the show, but he had a gyorkura this morning. Oh. Mm. Mac McMillan is having a golden the monkey. monkey. Nice, nice. nice. <laughs> golden monkey reminds me of uh, there. This is not really related to the show at all, but we we have a uh, we've got a bunch of recent travel vlog videos. Of course, we haven't been traveling. We're super excited to be traveling again soon, but we haven't been. So we've been. But Jen's mom has been traveling all over China uh, with the regular with uh, in a regular sort of tea trip cadence, and. Um, so you can check out those recent videos, but if you dig back in the catalog a bit, there was one where uh, how to make Taiping Ho Kui, I think it is. It is that one. And she starts the video with uh, in a field by herself, camera on a tripod, and she looks kind of left and right like that. I'm a little bit nervous about the monkeys. Cause no, they're, because there's, there's a, actual, yeah. Tell them, tell them. have monkeys there in the wild, and that's why that place was uh, known as Ho Gong. The, the name of the place was named of the monkeys. So, uh, it's a super... It was like, a, I'm not sure what I'm going to do if the monkeys come out. I was like, yeah, understandable. Yeah. <laughs> and it is understandable. They're, they're, uh, they can be pretty goofy and funny, but they can be pretty, uh, I mean, they're... But you're, you feel like that was super funny. I, don't, I was like, why is that funny? It's just cute the way she does a little look left, look right. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do if the monkeys come out. And I'm like, yeah, you do. You're going to run. <laughs> you're going to run for your life if the monkey king comes out. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Simmerjeet, I'm thinking about doing a blooming tea grandpa style. Mm. Mm. Endorsed. Should be really beautiful visually. Yes. Matches the day. Oh, that's a I great... I think Toronto is pretty hot today too. Toronto should be just as hot as us. So uh, definitely do that, Simmerjeet. I strongly encourage ah. that. And uh, then pop a picture on the Discord so we can all see that blooming tea. We'd love to see it. Um, better monkeys than bears. That's what Time Signature says. Maybe. I don't know much about monkeys. I, I, know an, I don't know much about bears either, but we're heading into bear country soon. And I agree. I don't want to meet a bear. It's okay. Cliffhanger. So, all right. So what was I saying? I was saying to leave a picture on the Discord. There's an invite code here, but down in the links down below, if you're not part of the Discord, you can join it. Great community of folks um, sharing pictures of tea, tea memes, um, tips, uh, questions about what is this tea? I have this tea. I don't know what it is. Maybe somebody on the Discord could help you out. So join us there. Um, Simmerjeet even had a question about water recipes, which I thought was interesting. Mm. I answered. It took me a while to answer, but we don't really make water, but we do play with different mineral waters and see what's going on with that. 
Yeah. Bride. Bride. Reminds me of Beaver Paul or something. I think he has some water recipe. Who? Babel Carp. Oh, Lou. Yeah, it's I possible think he Lou. Has, uh, water mm. recipes for the states. Different, yes. Uh, states Let's... with uh, how to. Oh, I think you're make right. The water, like spring water. Yeah, just to or, give it no. soften oh. it up a bit. No, actually, you can based on states and the the end results a different brand you wanted to taste like a like Evian or whatever Evian or ah. some other brand it's a pretty cool. complicated i had a look i was like oh too much trouble for me <laughs> <laughs> simmerjeet says that monkeys bite too and the shots after suck Ooh. i am sure they do all right guys so you know that as part of every oh bodique welcome to the show I'm experimenting with mineral water. Yeah, very fun. Let us know if you're not part of the Discord, join the Discord and let us know how it goes. We'd love to uh, see some of your brews um, and see, see how it goes with your uh, mineral water experiments. It definitely has a noticeable impact, mm -hmm. um, especially if you do side by side with your, you know, whatever your regular water situation is and your mineral water under test. Mm, yeah. Really cool, really cool. So of course, coming mm. up soon, we're going to dive into tea trivia, but I am going to... It's really similar mm. to Jiu Qi Hong, I'm sorry, uh, In Hong number nine, but mm. it's quite different. Right. I can only say similar, but it's... How paradoxical. It's, how different it is was impressive because they both have that uh, plumminess, that uh, <sighs> fruit thing, but yeah. what? Oh, just the monkey talk's gone crazy. <laughs> on the link but you're right about the plummy fruitiness but it's more traditional yunnan plummy fruitiness the ying home number nine is That's is so pushing floral. towards that eastern sweet yeah, floral sweet or something this is more like that dried plum mm. uh inward it's got a little more bite a little it has, more it i call it more crispy bite. it has a, also more fruity mm. the uh, mixed mm. fruit kind of thing mm. yeah less of that floral uplifting way stronger than right and even worse josh makes a good point in group yeah and super fast yeah I super fast <laughs> super strong compared to how they look you know a little monkey the size like maybe the size of a cat or a dog is like has inhuman strength when i was a kid i remember we went, we went to a mountain so i don't i monkeys are not Quite scary, but some of our mon uh, mountains have uh, monkeys, and they're all over. And because tourists, uh, they are always gathered there and uh, beg for food. And uh, what? Well, mm, cool. So I, I was really little, like uh, six, eight years old, and I saw somebody for the monkey first wants the beer, and drink, drink. So the guy feed the monkey a lot of beer. Then he feels uh, it's pretty fun to see a drunk bear, a uh, drunk monkey, and he keep feeding the monkey. The monkey didn't want it anymore and scratch him. So I saw that. That was like, I don't know what lesson I learned. <laughs> don't feed beer to monkey or something. I think that's a but... really good life lesson. <laughs> don't feed beer to monkeys. It's really funny how, how first they want more beer. But anyways, all I'm saying is when I was a, a little it, with troubles, we see a lot of monkeys. So it's just a, too fast. So they're too fast. I feel like really clumsy compared to them. So when my mom said that, I was really like, a, uh, really understand. You really had a childhood that. trauma. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't. It all wanna, came rushing back. I, I have, don't want to see those. I have no childhood traumas that involve real life monkeys. My monkey memories are all in the zoo. <laughs> Time Signature is taking it towards badgers, which are indeed much worse. We won't even go there because we're going to end up talking about honey badgers eventually, which is going to be a whole different kind of YouTube live. <laughs> we're here to talk about tea. And before we talk about tea, we are going to warm up with a little bit of tea trivia time. I forgot to press my button. I'm going to let the cheering wear out while I run over here. Come on. Press the button, rush back because I'm late, and get rid of the title screen. All right, folks, it looks like we've gone back to our old format. You get the chill out on the side 30 seconds before we get started, maybe about 20 by now. 
What is tea trivia time? Tea trivia time is where we have a little bit of fun. I ask you some light and fluffy fun questions to warm up to our Sunday Tea Book episode. Take a guess, enter the number one to four on your keyboard, press enter. Um, I don't know if you can change your answer or not. I don't think that works very well. So try and get it right the first time. And most of all, just have fun. There is no wrong answer. Take a guess. If you have no absolute idea, take a guess. Guess the funny answer. I try to always put one. Let's get started. All right, question one. Jen's favorite tea, Taeguanyin Classic, hails from this region. Is it one, Anxi, two, Wu Yi, three, Zhangping, or four, Suzhou? All right, Jen's favorite tea. A little question about Jen's favorite tea, which is Taeguanyin Classic. You can check that out on our website. Uh, there's a little description there of why exactly we call it classic. And in the meantime, uh, you've got about 10 seconds to get your answers in. Time's running out. So is it, is Taeguanyin Classic from Anxi? Is it from Wu Yi? Is it from Jiangping? Or is it from Suzhou? When the time runs out, don't worry, you still got a few seconds to get your answers in, but you're gonna be somewhere in the zone where you might miss out. So hesit don't hesitate any longer, get your answers in. I see tons of answers flooding in for answer number one. And a little question from Josh, it says also, Phil, who sneezed on the 12th Emperor's Tea in 1062? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm gonna put it on next week's tea trivia, don't tell me. All right, guys, brewing up your answers. If you're not sure, just take a guess or follow the crowd, or better yet, don't follow. Oh my gosh, look at that. Everybody got it right. Yeah. Way to go, guys. That's a sweet, I mean, gosh, two, four, six, seven correct answers. That is for the win. That is right, Take One Yin Classic Hails from Ansi. Um, you can check out an article about that region and our tea, the producer that makes our Take One Yin in Charen 2019. <sighs> Next one, <laughs> the key step in processing oolong tea is, is it one, rolling? Is it two, shaking? Is it three, kilgreen? Or is it four, drying? Plenty of time left, folks. You've got 20 seconds to get your answers in. A little warm up for today's Topic of oolong tea. What is the key step in processing oolong tea? We are going to talk lots about that in a few minutes. Slip your answers in. Let us know what is the key step in processing oolong tea. In the meantime, I'm going to sip on this here black tea. A few more moments to get your answers in before time runs out. making fun of the specificity of my tea trivia questions. Hey, there should be an answer to that. All right, lots of guesses coming in for three, kill green, two, shaking. I saw some for one, rolling, a couple more for one. Here we go. How many folks got it? Hey, congrats to Mac McMillan and, oh, I can't see who that is. Kajel, Kajel, and uh, got a lot of folks with rolling. We'll be talking about that in a few minutes, but good guesses, everybody. I think it's always great that everybody just takes a guess, take a stab at it. That's what Tea Trivia Time is all about. Next question. A boot? Hmm? A boot? A boot? About a boot? Oh, a boot. Hi, oh, it's all a boot. All right, next question. All time's almost out. Let me read it. In the English translation of tea classification in theory and practice, oolong tea is referred to as: Is it one blue long? Is it two sing cha? Is it three blue green tea? Or is it four blue tea? Uh, lots of lots of angst out in the world as uh, Time Signature and Josh realized that it wasn't the end. They didn't give the correct answer. Uh, <laughs> they even thought the Chinese characters were a trick. I thought I shouldn't do that with just that one. I don't give it away. All right, we got some guesses for blue tea coming in. I'm surprised Time Signature guessed blue tea. I was kind of baiting you with num answer number one there, Time Signature. Lots of guesses for four rushing in right now. Um, ah, but there's the qualifier. It should be blue long, says Time Signature MMA. I have a feeling we're headed towards a good result here. Let's see what the computer says. Ding, 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 ding. Almost everybody got it right. Hey, good job taking a guess, Bodique. 
awesome guess at blue green tea but the answer in this document is blue tea and while i'm talking about it you can get the document from the links down below more on that once we get started um excellent so that is uh another question about what we're going to talk about today and here we go with question next what are the three oolong teas in the gen tea oolong tea master cultivar collection is it one, Rogue, Shui Xian, and Te Guan Yin? Is it two, Bai Sui Xiang, Rogue, and Shui Xian? Is it three, Lao Tong Shui Xian, Sui Xian, and Bai Nian Lao Tong Sui Xian? Whew, that's a mouthful. Or is it four? There is no such collection. Whoo, what a mystery that one is. Which one is it? Can you guess? Or can you get on the internet and check in time? That sounds like Mario. Did it sound like Mario? Did it sound mysterious? Huh? I thought it sounded mysterious. Yeah. Let me know if you thought that sounded mysterious. <laughs> anyway, I got some new sounds. I'm playing with them. If you hate them, let me know. If you love them, let me know. But what are the three Oolong teas in the Gen T Oolong Tea Master dash cultivar collection? Hint. That's a little hint. I got a guess for three. I see a guess for one. I see some more guesses for one. Oh my goodness! Oh. Oh, this is pretty I stumped nice. the crowd. I stumped the crowd. The answer is by Sui Xiang, Rogue Wei, and Shui Xian. And the reason it's those three is because it's a cult of our collection. We're, we've got the same um, uh, tea type, we've got the same producer, same farm. The only difference is the cultivar, so it lets you really focus in on tasting the differences in the cultivars. That is a great collection. Check it out on our website, pop it in your cart, boom, get it at your door. Just like that. Next question. A mysterious Pokemon level. Good, it was mysterious. Next week's Sip Along Tea for Sunday Tea Book is, is it one? Bai Mudan Top Grade White Tea. Is it two, Shui Xian Oolong Tea? Is it three, Gu Zhu Zisun Green Tea? Or is it four, 2015 Old Tree Shu Puar Dark Tea? The weird thing is, is I actually forget right now. I think I just remembered it, <laughs> but when I read those through, I was like, I have no earthly idea. Luckily, when I make these questions, a few more seconds to get your guesses in, folks. Get them in. I didn't pay any to Cultivar. Oh, Cultivar Collection. Guesses coming in for one, Bai Mudan, Top grade white tea. Mmm, that would be nice if that was right. Kiel also missed the cultivar part. It was a little bit kind of embedded there. I tried to call out it, call it out as a hint, but I was a little bit too subtle, I think. Um, Simmerjeet is guessing uh, the old tree Shu Puar. Lolo comes in with Shui Xian. And way to go, Lolo and Fernanda. You got it right. Everybody else is a winner too because you all participated in tea trivia time. And what's going to happen now is the magic computer is going to tabulate all the answers and we will have a leaderboard, which doesn't mean we have a leader. It just means that we all had fun and we get to look at it and say, yay, way to go. Fernanda, who made it at the top Ooh. of the leaderboard with three nice. correct answers. Also, Kel and Lolo with three correct answers. You guys are all winners. And so is Simmerjeet, Josh, Time Signature, Mac McMillan. That one's hard to read. I got to go to Bodique and Julia. You guys are all winners in my book. Way to go. Thank you for playing tea trivia time. And now it is time to get back to uh, finding out what you're drinking <laughs> as well as, uh, as well as finding out what's in your cup. If you want to let us know what part of the country you're watching from, we love to hear uh, all the different parts of the world that folks are from. Every time. The camera cut back. I'm always uh, about to yawn or yawning. <laughs> no excuse. No excuse. No excuse. It's no excuse. No excuse. You had your break this time. The system went back to how it was. We have no idea how that works. So uh, that's the level of production. Um, uh, Rough. <laughs> poor time signature feels as dumb as Skeletor's minions. That's a tough one. That's another <laughs> He-Man <laughs> reference. Good times as always. All right, mm. so we're gonna dive in, but I don't think we need to dive in like right away. I think we can take a moment. You can let us know how your tea is tasting. What are the tasting notes you're enjoying? I'm gonna let you know uh, how my tea is tasting. 
Uh, I always throw in the last question now, what is the next tea coming up? Because we have a concept of a sip along tea, which you're welcome to join in and you're also welcome to just sip whatever you've got there at home. But if you want to, we always publish the teas that we're going to be brewing during Sunday Tea Book. Mm -hmm. If you just look ahead at the uh, scheduled Sunday Tea Books, you'll see what we're brewing. You can go ahead and grab those and brew them along with us and share the, share the tasting notes. We can all share our own impressions. I love to hear how uh, different teas impact people. And it's neat when you're having it quote unquote with them, even though you'd be far away, we'd still be having the same tea. Mm. And it's neat to hear the different notes and stuff. So if you want to yes. uh, jump in on the uh, sip along bandwagon, that is uh, kind of what inspired me to make that part mm. of uh, Sunday tea trivia. It's also an easy point for everybody. You can always look ahead and get that one right. No problem <laughs> at all. Little, little tip there. Um, Oh, and Fernanda's drinking a Taeguan Yin green mixed with a bit of mint and fennel. Oh nice. Getting into the blending. Very cool. Oh, fennel. And Bodique drinks mostly Shupuar red teas. Mm. Um, uh, uh, Shupuar's tea, red teas or white. white. Mm. Peach plum. All delightful Ray choices. Raisin side oak. Whoa. Oh, wow. I have to read back up and see what, what they're uh, drinking. Yeah, sounds Tattoo really late. good. Kel, can you remind us what you were drinking? I, it's, it's kind of scrolled off screen. Blindly missed the cultivar part. Uh, I like the sounds. Hey, thank you for liking the sounds. That's <laughs> always good to know. Yeah, you're going to have to let us know what you're mm. drinking, but I love the tasting notes. Let's review yeah. those again. Peach, plum, grape slash raisin, slight oak. I love the slight Whoa. oak. I love a little woody. Yeah. A little woodiness to tea gives it a, it's a little bit of a deeper, like subtle flavor. The gyokro I had earlier was very delicate. I had notes of that vegetal greenness. Not rank though. Not rank though. Not rank. <laughs> let, me, let me get that out of the way right away. All right. So just before we dive into, um, uh, dive into tea classification and theory and practice, I will again direct you to the link down below so you can grab that document if you haven't got it already. Mm -hmm. um, the link is down below. You can download it off of the, it's a French agricultural site. Uh, uh, yes. Thank heavens for them for uh, hosting that. I always put her phone super far away after the uh, Instagram bit. I always forget to put that close. But yeah, check out the link down there. Grab the document. Again, thanks to them for uh, posting that and hosting mm -hmm. that document. That is so great. And we are on page number uh, 13 in that Adobe document with the yes. Adobe page numbering or page 340, 340 uh, is the page number if you want to catch up to where we are. And then you'll notice the paragraph will have a number five beside it. I think we're getting towards the bottom of the page. Yeah, it's the last... It's the last section on that page, uh, section five. So that is where we're at. The document is linked down below. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in section five and uh, yeah. So I should ask again, just in case, cause I think tea trivia is so fun. A lot of you might mm -hmm. just want to give us a thumbs up just because of tea trivia. <laughs> I'm totally okay with that. Uh, you can definitely. I love that too, especially your little dance, okay? That was a good one. Right, I brought some new moves. I brought some new moves to the table. Yes, all new moves. If you didn't like the moves, give them a thumbs down and leave a comment so I know. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> or better yet, just leave a thumbs up. Those are always more fun. What's a ha ha for? I don't know, just, just join the Discord, leave us pictures of your tea, and, uh, and um, yeah, that's all. I don't know, I'm just running on with them all. <sighs> all right, guys. All right, guys. Today we're talking about oolong. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to let somebody smart talk for a while. You mean doughy one? <laughs> Anyways, so we're talking about oolong today and based on the process of how oolong can be categorized in different types. And as I mentioned, this one we talk to talk about process and uh, uh, categorization of oolong there's some the difference we can sense when we read it now uh read the paper vis-a-vis uh, -vis our knowledge now so after what 50 years there no 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 er says 40 years mm. so there's some uh, changes in the tea industry in oolong tea industry which 
I just want to pause there because yeah. there's a, I think there's a few new folks with us today, Anna, mm. and we're talking about the, um, you know, th this is the paper that defined the T categories. Now they, the category names existed, but what this paper did was it, it kind of defined, you know, what is a green tea and what isn't, and what is a yellow tea and what isn't, not just what the producers call it, but it gives a scientific classification of how do you be a yellow tea? What do you need to have in your chemistry, in your uh, leaf, liquor color, those kind of things. Mm. What was shocking for me and why I wanted to pause, especially for the new folks, the, everybody, the people who are with us again have heard this, but was how recent this document is. We all, as a, as a Westerner, I always thought the Chinese tea categories were hundreds of years old. And indeed, green tea has been around for hundreds of years. But they weren't the rough category. The has rough been, category, yeah. right? That's a good way to say it. But getting them really straightened out and sorting out which one goes in which is only from the uh, late seventies. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. Okay. Now you can go back. Sorry about that. No, no, that's uh, really good to emphasize that, and um, because uh, Chinese tea and stuff has a long history, mm. so oftentimes when we say, uh, you know traditionally or mm -hmm. uh, in, in history or stuff, we often feel like it's ultra long, but a lot of things are quite new and fresh mm -hmm. to our knowledge. So interesting. Okay, let's start with in the paper, the very first sentence, uh, I mean the second sentence, uh, there's an interesting thing when it comes to color, which we were talking about <laughs> is so uh, since we're talking about oolong tea and in the paper that call that a blue tea, again I want to emphasize uh, the the Chinese word for that is qing cha. Qing as a color word can be used as different colors in different words. So uh, I talk about a little bit more about this uh, character in one of our uh, language videos. Mm. So in terms of a qing cha as a oolong, this tea category, this color is more referring to the green, but the yellowish green. That color is a pretty typical oolong leaf color. So really translated as a blue, uh, I think, personally I think it's a little bit, it should be more to the green side rather than a blue tea. So I, uh, I don't really uh, agree with the blue tea kind of translation and that also calls in the sentence where it talks about purple it shows up because in Chinese mm. it's actually talking about the characteristics of a oolong tea which is the red edge and uh, the greenish middle and because of there's red and green so the translation become blue purple there's no purple color in the tea and there's no blue color in oolong tea so better way, as we all call today, oolong tea. Right, yeah. That blue-green or blue-purple really threw me off because I thought it was the sort of the leaf color, the typical, but you don't see many blue-purple oolongs. But then when you said red edge with the green inside, that's a pretty common saying associated with oolong tea, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I guess it was just a tricky uh, translation to negotiate that saying. Yeah. yeah. So here we clear out some uh, color issue. Then later on, when uh, you keep reading that, it talk about the normal process method involves uh, something, something, something. So the normal is a interesting word. It's not wrong or anything. It's uh, in Chinese we call that zheng uh, gui means the uh, how should I say the official? Not quite official. Uh, how did we say that the other day? I forgot. I use a, 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 a metaphor or comparison to explain to him. So what I said mm. is more like a food truck with the license right. and stuff. Well, if we just drive our car and start to sell food on the street, well, not necessarily we poison everybody, but we are not, a, yeah, a not governmentally official, official yeah. equipped. But it doesn't, I don't think official is quite, the, uh, it's more uh, regulated, maybe regulated. Mm process right. so this um why or sanctioned it, kind of thing like yeah the know. the kind of the undertone of this word is because around that time it has a time uh kind of a special 
uh, note there is around that time, mm. a lot of things these um, tea people are trying to do is get tea, have a standard quality, have some re uh, more consistent quality. As the industry, every industry needs uh, needs a standard, need to have a little rules and regulations and uh, knows, have some standard, just, right. you know. And it so, was sort of the uh, it was sort of the the era of those standards emerging, right? Mm, so because before that, uh, during the because uh, you probably know China had a big war time for almost a century, very unstable and stuff. So what that means is that there's a lot of loss in process. You mm. might have a oolong tea today, say tea guan yin might taste like this today, go to the next one, taste totally off, almost mm. like a black tea. Like at that time, the 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 tea producing market looks really different than today. So being able to uh, give the producers and farmers a guide of how to do that properly, how to make your product competitive in the market, have consistent quality. So it was a big, big part. Yeah. Uh, of that time. One of the things you mentioned too that I was really like like that struck me as interesting is uh, that also you have to be kind of in the context of the time is nowadays we really treasure those heirloom sort of right, right. random handmade custom and of course that it does have a lot of appeal but this was a, a different kind of uh, so this is sort of the opposite set where things were so chaotic it was hard to get consistency in the market to the point mm. where it was making life hard for the actual producers because the and import export would be really hard right, because right. you know the market doesn't know getting, what to expect yeah right I think it's a common like a trend the same with what we know like uh, I said like we talk about those handmade uh, uh, porcelains and stuff where mm. their imperfection is very beautiful it's because we stand here today two yes. three hundred years ago uh, people are struggling to make things consistent. So I grab a nail uh, from this store and the next store I can still put it in my car and stuff. Like the fourth line was a big advancement mm. of production. So that's kind mm. of a, it's a, we have to build a standard. Then we, at a certain height, we can develop some personality. Right. Right. So right. Nice it's a similar nice. to this a tea industry situation. So uh, it's a little word that uh, shows the, time of this paper mm. and uh, uh, and normal is a little weird translation as it, we would probably think about something like odd or the opposite of normal right so just want to clear that a bit yeah it actually for me it just sounds like the normal mm. processing method involves blah 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 it doesn't even stand out as an interesting word it's just like this is how you do it mm. it doesn't it doesn't call out the fact that there is a, a that it's a standardized way of doing it yeah, and it yeah, doesn't call out the time to uh to me as a reader as a western reader that doesn't appreciate that the the, the sentiment of the time and miss the character as well the chinese character mm. And later on, it uh, kind of shows the few steps of making oolong, which is uh, withering, blue coloring, heating to eliminate rankness, rolling, drying, and so on. Uh, again, in terms of how tea, <laughs> how tea turns are translated, there are many versions. His version uh, is here. And if we read or learn about tea in various uh, sources, they all could have different words for the same uh, process or stuff. So uh, uh, personally, I still prefer to keep that uh, Chinese term so it's not very, very confusing because how you would translate, just like a tea name, how, you, how different people would translate it is quite different. So withering, as we call it, is wei diao, it's a, a common step in many tea making and after that the blue coloring could be a little bit like uh, misleading mm, as if it's a, like a, I would think about a food coloring <laughs> <laughs> when I think about blue uh, when I read blue coloring but um, it's called the zuo ting is a tea term uh, if you have to translate word by word is 
make green, if you're okay with like a kill green, the way to translate the uh, shati. So right. make green, that's really bad, make. Uh, pretty much the whole thing is make tea. Uh, by that, it usually, usually um, translated, I've seen shaking, uh, right. or some people might say oxidizing. Uh, depends on which angle you're looking. You translate based on the movement or you translate based on the purpose. Some people translate based on the result. Different version, but right. in Chinese it's called the qing. And this is the key step of making wulong mm. tea. Yeah, if you'll remember from tea trivia. <laughs> That's a really good question. Mm. Tricky one though. And then later on we have um, uh, uh, after oxidation, we do a kill grain, but more specifically, uh, this is a pan fire kill grain. Mm. Uh, then rolling, and last is not last step. Last step to mao cha is drying, and so on. Because <laughs> after that is mao cha, then we have to more uh, further step. To, then we will eventually get what we're drinking. Right. And, uh, and so on also reminded me the, of his audience, right? It's, mm. not a, it's not a how to make tea guide, right? This mm. is a, a document written for tea producers who know the and so on. You yeah. know, it's for their tea, whatever if you do for your Mostly umon. for tea like academics. People. Right, right. Yeah. But people who didn't need the, all those details, he's focusing on the, uh, chemi uh, the chemistry side. Mm -hmm. So as mentioned that the Zuo Qing, the blue coloring, as in the paper referring to, blue coloring. So that's the key step of mm. making Wulong tea. And um, after uh, have a general introduction of a Wulong product, uh, processing steps, he dive into the different types of Wulong and uh, the different categorization was based on Zuo Qing. So what it happens basically is the time gave time for in this is the step to encourage tea leaves to oxidize mm -hmm. i just want to point out sometimes when we talk about tea process we're like oh this is oxidation this is a fermentation mm. this tea green tea oh, there's really no ferment uh, there's no oxidation because there's kill green uh, it's a little bit more complicated than that yeah we the way we say it about different types is is there a step to encourage this mm -hmm. activity in leaves to happen rather than do does it really happen and in terms of leaf itself there's more than oxidation or fermentation there's always brew uh, breathing uh, there's lots of a chemical biological uh, actions happening in the leaf itself so um, it doesn't mean that a green tea have zero oxidation from the right. chemical side and it and uh, when we talk about oolong tea which uh, can be lightly oxidized to heavily oxidized and uh, it doesn't mean it's a white tea as we mentioned previous weeks so that white tea also has a little oxidation mm -hmm. so it's right. more about that step Right, right. As we learned last week, right, white tea has the, uh, it's neither encouraged nor discouraged, but it is allowed to oxidize. Yeah. Here we have the Zao Qing or shaking, whatever you want to call it, step, which does do an encourage, encourage. It's an encouragement. It kind mm -hmm. of lightly bruises the edge of yeah. the cell uh, so that it can yeah. uh, promote this kind of uh, oxidation. Right. I see in the comments time signature. Uh, is it time signature? Yeah, he says oolong is just like Star Wars. It has a light side and a dark side. Yeah. And Fernanda says, come to the light green side. <laughs> nice. Uh, Bodique says that uh, they like to add orange zest to their tea when they get bored uh, of the taste. And mm. then uh, and uh, I'm boiling water with berries and then make tea with it. So that's, oh, that's cool. an interesting little trick. Cool. And, orange um, zest. Orange zest, sorry. Orange zest mm. and it sounds like also berries. Yeah, yeah. And That's I'm really boiling. Cool. I like orange with the tea too. Yeah, really good. Mm, I really love those puar that are aged in a mandarin mm. uh, uh, skin. I, I always <laughs> want to meet. I think your mom did it once. She got one all like cleared out just through the top somehow. 
A little bit creepy, but amazing. I saw somebody use a little, make that into a little incense burner. It was pretty cool. Mm. And Josh had a comment about uh, Gen, um, the standard method, uh, normal. What was it? Mm. Gen? Zhengui. Zhengui. Uh, standard yeah. method or yeah. standardized method. That's the method. word yeah. where I picked it up that uh, Josh's comment realized standard. Right, right. Yeah. I wasn't sure how exactly to say it. Cool, cool. Mm. Yeah, and I noticed a, earlier comments just as I was reviewing them. There's a there's a few folks whose uh, self esteem has been shattered by tea oh. trivia. So I just want you to know that the cure for that oh, is drink more tea. Yes, and uh, forget tea about is it. a well known <laughs> well known self esteem uh, re rehabilitator. I don't know if that's a word. Rehabilitator. I don't know. Just drink tea and your self esteem will be fine. And uh, keep playing tea trivia time though. The uh, the thing I want to emphasize is that. Uh, you should not stop playing tea trivia time, especially if you're feeling that way, because it can be uh, it can be stuck. You got to keep playing. Eventually, your self-esteem will blossom and everything will be fine. Okay, so uh, just want to make sure you're all good. Uh, care about each and every one of you very much. And uh, tea trivia time is just a good time. So, Skeletor's minions, you're always welcome. <laughs> awesome. All right, let's have a sip of tea. Let's have some sip of tea. I feel like I talked a lot. You did. I was I was actually filling up your teacup to keep you uh oh, thank sufficiently you. um sufficiently um able to continue talking. Mm. Ooh, that's hot. You know, after you've been drinking tea for a while and it cools down and then you get some fresh brew and it's hot again. Can you gotta be really mm. careful about it? I really like it. I don't know, maybe uh maybe it's just me. I'm um, you know there it's are not those little you. tea, <laughs> those little teacups that are double walled. It's really pretty. I mm. love it. It almost like a tea liquor floating in the middle. Double walled teacup. I I don't use those because <laughs> I pick it up. It's never hot. Like my like, like my sen my hand is my sensor. When I pick up the teacup, I know. Okay, this is pretty hot. I had better mini sips and slurp it. But with the also, because my first experience was that I got, you know, my mouth was burned when I sip it. I pick up that teacup mm, and right. There's no warning. Cool. There's no warning. There's I don't do no nothing. But it was really hot tea. Oh yeah, that can so, be a nasty little surprise for your uh, tongue and mouth. As many people might like a thicker wall for uh, cups and stuff. I like a thing. I like things that can warn me. If I cannot pick up this cup, it's a it's kind of a warning. Don't pick yeah, up the yeah, whole cup. Yeah, don't drink it. Right. It's not ready. Lolo has recently discovered some bluish violet color on some dry oolong rolls slash balls. Mm. So was that on the, uh, I guess that's before brewing. That's very interesting. Cool. Really interesting. Definitely, uh, if you got some pictures of those, throw those mm. up on the uh, Discord. I'd love to see that. Mm. That is an interesting um, find. I, I don't know. I don't have a better word for the um, the crispiness, the bite. The uh, this tea is not it's astringent or bitter, mm. but it does have. A, it's a really brisk style of the uh, flavor. Yeah, it Do has a briskness. A, That's really nice it's too. It's a style of uh, flavor. It's not an element that mm -hmm. I felt most of. Mm. It's like with this, with the gentle sweetness, more of that dried plum, dried raisin, dried prune. It has a little, dry, a little bit of dryness as well. Like a, there, it's not overly sweet at all, but the fruitiness is there. Yes. With less sweet. Yes. Ah, really good. Interesting. So you inspire mm. Josh which cup to use. Uh, he's <laughs> going to use his double walled <laughs> tiny glass cups. Good luck, don't burn yourself unless you are having like a <laughs> ice, uh, cold brew. He's got a good little trick. He holds it up to his face to feel the steam, ah, right? Or that's smart. Right under your glasses that's if it steams also, up your yeah, glasses. That's very smart because uh, usually we like to smell the liquor a little bit before we drink. Mm. Mm. Well, that kind of right. shows I'm not very. But he still had a few burns to get to get that worked out. Right. Which is <laughs> which is I think sort of the uh, the common the common path to not burning yourself with mm. double wall cups. But they are so pretty, right? The they're way it, so the way the liquor is so, suspended yes, in yes. the in the yes. glass. Mm. Totally. All right. 
Mm. Oh, that is so refreshing. As per normal, this is our first Gaiwan, our first Gong Fu tea session of the day. Yeah, yeah. We did have a new long this morning, so we were kind of on on point with the. Uh, and poor, we finished. And we, we had often, an oolong and a puar. <laughs> we often drink a puar. No, we always drink mm. puar at night. Now we often drink half or one point to five mm. tea sessions and save a little bit for next day. Yeah, we've been working so hard. We we end the night super thirsty, so we usually have a tea session of shu puar, and then we're like, oh, let's have some more. Mm. But we don't want so much. Yeah. So we half finished that one, and we have a not quite finished one in the morning. Mm. So we finished it this morning. <laughs> it's totally okay. I saw some questions about that on uh, some social media outlet. People oh. are like, oh. Can, what do I do if I don't finish my tea leaves? And there was a, it was interesting to see the different opinions. But anyway, if you want to know what we do, we put the lid on, we leave it there, we come back to it the next day. Yeah, it depends yeah. on where you are, the temperature and <coughs> stuff. Just uh, you wouldn't know once you do the tea go bad. Yeah, give it a sniff. <laughs> give it a Sometimes sniff. Sometimes I forget uh, the pour and like a day or two, then I smell that. So that's a little bit of, uh, sour. Mm. Mm. Don't, drink, nice. don't drink that. Folks. Not suggested. Don't drink that, folks. <laughs> All right, diving back in. Dive back in, yes. Based on the, where was that? Oh, talk about the uh, Qing. So Qing, you can know, uh, most often translation mm. I see is a shaking, but of course it's not just shaking. So here it's separated, uh, it kind of divided into uh, four different categories of oolong. And, uh, based on how the, mm -hmm. the zuoqing is. One is dong zuoqing, which I think is called juggling. Right? Joggling. Joggling. We had such a fun discussion about right. this because joggle is not, I think it's not overly used anymore, but I think everybody knows, you know, you joggle is basically another word for shaking. Mm. You might see that in videos or stuff. Uh, uh, if it's by hand, it's a big bamboo plate, mm -hmm. and the producer should shake it. That kind of movement, the leaf kind of mini dances on the plate. So it's super hard, folks. I think there's a video in our oh, vlog of me hard. trying like, to do it. It looks so easy with that. If we oh, try yeah. to, if you've never oh, done yeah. that, you try to do that. Guess what? It's not gonna move, and it's. Oh, actually, it's a really good arm exercise. You know? Really good. And they're not just <laughs> joggling the leaves randomly. They're mm -hmm. actually turning them. They're joggling them evenly, making sure that the bottom ones move. Like, it's really technical. Yeah. They you have to lift everything. Otherwise, mm. the bottom ones are keep bruising Getting with smashed. the bamboo, while the top ones are not. So uh -huh. it wouldn't be even, it's, which it's would result in a lot of issues. Anyway, the second one is a she, so she is a yao dong zuo qing. Uh, here is called rocking. Rocking. Anyway. Tigers of the sea. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Anyway, it's not that kind of rocking, folks. Not that kind of rocking. It's more like this. Mm. It's not like that either, but you know what I mean? That's the rocking that it means. So the difference is in terms of movement of the leaves, this is gentler. Mm. And uh, then the next uh, category is withering, withering as a zuo qing. This fourth one is uh, sh uh, xun hua, which means blending. Uh, in China, China tea book, we talk about how Chinese uh, uh, scented teas are made. They go through a lot of process, not just the flower and tea put together, mm. right? They that's. Um, if you want to know more about how like jazz, Chinese jasmine green tea and all those tea flower mm. teas or scented flower teas are made, you can check on that episode we talk in depth. So here are yeah. here, here. But it is a striking difference between the blends we see in the West, which is sort of like a post finished tea mm. recipe. You know, have some tea, have some of this flower, some mm. of this orange. This is proper making. This is in, and yeah. I think scented and blended. The key word is scented. So the right. flower scent is getting into the tea leaf. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely incredible. There's Check out that episode. It's so interesting. Many steps to make that happen mm. and take a long time. Mm. So uh, this kind of a categorization and this kind of a wording are um, kind of out of date 
Nowadays, we don't use that as much. And you mean the joggling, rocking, joggling, withering, rocking, withering those. So again, Xunhua, those sanded teas are its own category because it goes through. Though it's a wulong tea base, it goes through mm. further process of the right. to soak up the flower um, scent. So that's a different type. While talking about uh, like joggling and rocking, uh, later on I give examples of what is joggling, yan cha and isle. And isle. Isle. Okay. So this oh, isn't that a cool word for tea, guys? Let us know if you think. Is an AI. A Y E Y, is let. What about yeah, it's spelled is let, but it's pronounced is let. I think. Well, Correct well, me if I'm wrong. In whiskey, it's I S L. Spellings all over the place on whiskey bottles. I think. Oh, mm. okay. I don't know. Just I didn't remember that uh, let. Anyways. I could be dead wrong. So it's a uh, Yan Cha, Zhou Cha, and Shan Cha. Uh, we don't hear much about uh, uh, Zhou Cha and Shan Cha because in a uh, uh, 90s, early 2000s, there's a big marketing in the Yan Cha, Wu Yan Cha to mm. uh, congregate every tea is Yan Cha mm. kind of thing. These are old, uh, <laughs> old information. Right. Old times, uh, talk about Yan Cha is only the uh, tea from cliff. Zhou Cha means the tea by the water. Shan right. Cha means it's outside ish. The, a a those, little bit away from the cliffs yes, and the water. But nowadays, all those are known as Yan Cha, but there's, of, of course, a difference in uh, grace in Yan Cha. Right, right. And uh, this kind of changes happens with the, the local uh, government associations, the right, big right. movement of simplify what's going yeah. on so that people can at least know, okay, we have rock to here. Mm -hmm. So, but this kind of a jump, uh, joggling, uh, Zuo Qing is uh, Yan Cha, but that's also an old, lots of old, uh, out of date information. Right. As now this uh, kind of a juggling Zuo Qing is very universal in almost all right. Wulong tea region. Mm -hmm. You look at uh, uh, Anxi also use that. Yep. You look at, uh, uh, even though later on it give you examples of Guangdong, say Fenghuang Dantong, it also mm. uses that. There's a lot of merging ever uh, since this right. article was talking about in the yeah. 70s. It reminds me of Jungping, that machine. Do you remember yes. that funky machine? That's it, the best uh, machine. It was I've a machine felt. that uh, pretty much does what the. Let me get my both arms in there. You know, like the, the action it really they do with the, the really hand close, yeah. Shaking. Uh, yeah. process more than any machine mm. we've seen yeah yeah, yeah. so um, but again it, it was not in uh, it wasn't a yan cha for example yeah. and the later uh, explaining the rocking as zuo qing as the shaking motion mm. as a rocking it mentions that in anxi taiwan and uh, fujian taiwan and guangdong as a taiwanese wulong uh, comes like originated from fujian like people mm. go there get tea get go to Taiwan and get tea and the tea process is set up. So their process uh, was really similar. Now it's more uh, separated. It's Taiwan diverging, yeah. have its own type. But uh, here as a rocking is talking about nowadays, the term you will hear more would be long ting. Uh, anyway, tea term. Uh, what it means is more gentle tea shaking method. What they do is just using hand to mm. flip the leaves rather than rock the same side, uh, rock the whole bamboo plate. Uh, yes, how big the leaf shakes affects the taste greatly. So, um, you know, there's a huge amount of Taiwanese wulong are from China, but you taste it, oh, that's the Taiwanese right. wulong. Uh, you know, men in China produce a huge number of uh, Taiwanese wulong wood right. stuff. So how the tea was processed, uh, and especially when it's wulong, this uh, shaking, the way to uh, shake the leaves really affects the later result. And yeah. usually those teas are more sweeter or more aromatic, like floral. Mm. Same with uh, mm. Guangdong means uh, Fenghuang Dantong is that kind of tea. Right, again, floral. As, um, yeah, mm. Fenghuang Dantong as the representative of Guangdong Wulong. Right on. Mm. So I'm just checking out, I think I was really, uh, I was Isla. I had it completely wrong. I, you were right, That's mm. not a, that has nothing to do with whiskeys. Uh, Josh corrected us, corrected me. 
and not you. You were, uh, you were like, oh, I think it's a different spelling. You were right. It's, I, it's uh, Isla is the pronunciation, spelled Islay if you want to just butcher the pronunciation. Right, um, which is ah, islet is, is small, small island yes, or yeah. islet, islet. So uh, islet. yeah, like because we say I S L E is isle. Uh, strangely okay. enough, <laughs> uh, it's a combo of island and let. Looked up islet, little island. The whiskey is isla, ah. isla. So thank you guys for straightening thank me out. You. That is super handy. Um, you saved me from potentially Island. years of uh, years of uh, I keep still getting those words mixed up. Yes. Wow. Mm. English is full of those tricks for us. Traps, absolute traps. <laughs> yeah, so that wow. but that wraps up oolong tea from mm. the uh, tea. It's a little bit, uh, I think it's a little bit tongue twister and a little bit complicated mm -hmm. when it comes to this uh, detail process. Uh, yeah. Honestly, you don't have to know any of those. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. The key thing yeah. is just uh, if you're reading the paper by yourself and stuff, this is the oh. section where there's a heavy time uh, mark. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to just put throw out a couple things too. A couple mm -hmm. just notes for um, notes for the, um, you know, since we're English speakers, uh, there is a couple translation. Uh, no, not too many. Just this one thing here. There was in part you see, I crossed that one out in red because it was just a. It were, uh, I don't know if we figured out why it was there, but it just reads better without it. It shouldn't be in part. It is achieved before rolling. Full stop. Not in part. There's no more rolling after this. So I just wanted to point that out just in case you're reading through it. Maybe grab your pen and cross that out because that doesn't exist in the Chinese one. The rest of all of my marks. Not that important. We've already covered all of those and talked about them here today. Mm. So just wanted to throw that out for those of you that are reading it. Watch out for that. Awesome. Yeah. And yeah, so that is us. We're getting really close. Um, the next uh, section is the last mm. specific T. Uh, the six tea. of six, right? This was this is in the Black order that they appeared. So that's kind of an interesting way to look at the tea. We often approach them in the level of oxidation order because that's a convenient one logically to look at, right? So green, white, uh, green, yellow, white, oolong, black and dark with black and dark being kind of fuzzy at the end. So in order of oxidation, but then um, Chen Chuan approached them in order of appearance, which was really fun to Appearance? Order of yes. historical appearance, yeah, right? Historical so green. appearance with the uh, oxidation level in mind. Mm -hmm. Because it's not like a, they're not happened from a, like a strict timeline. Some of them are around the right, same time. Right, right, right. With yeah. oxidation level in mind. And it is interesting to see that that level does have some coincidental or maybe not coincidental, just it's kind of the temporal relationship is pretty tight. Mm. So really cool. Um, so up next is uh, red tea or uh, in English we call them black tea, hong cha. And that's going to be awesome. And that will be, we got to do a little party guys. It's going to be episode 50. 50. It's going to be what super fun. 50 or 52? As a, I... We're going to have two parties. We got to have a party at 50. And then when we wrap up the uh, book, we got to have another party. So we'll do something fun. For both, okay. Okay. But. Maybe everybody bring a pizza for themselves. <laughs> everybody pizza bring a, an extra large pizza just for yourself. Too we'll, bad for beer. <laughs> bring a pizza and a shampooar because you'll mm. need it with that extra large pizza. And um, post pictures of your pizza on the uh, Discord channel. If you're not <laughs> part of the Discord, you can join it in the links down below. And um, we gotta solve the issue about Mike and the Chewy till we can eat. Right, right. A mute, we need a mute button for chewing and <laughs> other functions. Um, right, so in terms of Oolong, there's uh, some great articles about Oolong, about Te Guan Yin in Cha Ren magazine as well. You can find links to that probably down below in the description or uh, just head to our website, genti.ca slash Cha Ren. That is a Another great publication that Jen and I produce after tea trips where we dive into the various interesting aspects of the regions or the farms or the people we've met or visited with. It's more the behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. The mm. in industry phenomena, so something that uh, mm. 
a little bit more in depth where we share more of our thoughts and opinions and uh, observations. So if you're interested in that, it's a... And it's free. You just mm -hmm. put in your email address and boom, you have access to that. You can check that out. Um, guys, I want to say a huge thank you to all of you for joining us. Uh, so uh, such a great crew that we have coming back. Great to see some new faces. Thank you guys for joining us too. Please join us again next week. We'll be back with episode 50 and some kind of special party. Super stoked about that. Um, this whole idea couldn't work without you guys. The whole reason we're doing it is to share this process of going through and uh, digging deeper into the culture. As we saw, indeed, you guys helped us out with the words when we were struggling and what, to, what is this, what is that, when is Phil wrong, let him know. I love that, let me know. Um, and yeah, grab next week's tea. It is the Shui Xian. It is an epic tea. It is so delicious. Uh, roasty tobacco. Uh, it's just a great rock tea. It is my favorite tea. Maybe you can tell by how I'm talking about it. Shui Xian is my when I, I have to have a favorite as a tea vendor, people say, hey, what's your favorite tea? Shui Xian. It is so good. So head on over to the website, grab yourself some tea so you can sip along with us next week. And guys, until next time. Thank you. Keep steeping. Keep steeping. Bye-bye.